Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to talk about some poetry of interest, uh, and we are also in that period of pride, so I wanted to focus on an LGBT poet. Uh, and today's uh, poem is all about a great cataclysm. I am referring to Suddenly All the Continents. Uh, by Harold Norse. For those who don't know, Harold Norse was uh, a uh, an American poet uh, who lived between the early 1900s to the uh, the late 1900s um, throughout the 20th century. Uh, he was a member of the Beat Generation of poets, uh, uh, kind of one of my favorite ones. I, um, I find myself torn between the Confessionalists, who were brilliant, and the Beat poets, who were also challenging norms and uh, doing some pretty groovy things with uh, with poetry. Uh, he was heavily anthologized in his in his time. I don't think he wrote that many books or whatnot, but he did get a lot of his work published in journals, magazines, and in various other uh, locations, which is pretty cool. And he was also uh, gay, uh, pretty out um, uh, gay poet, uh, which is cool. It's also the reason that uh, I am talking about him today, although this poem is definitely very interesting, and I probably would have talked about it had I known about it uh, without um, having like the reason be that he was a gay poet in this, this period of pride thing. Uh, and so without further ado, let's talk about this poem. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Suddenly all the continents. Suddenly all the continents slipped and fell. A Gulliver crash. The oceans and caves snapped shut with Tyrannosaurus jaws. The moon was not well. The sun through a scrim of foam peered like a child with open wonder at adults gone wild. Into the caves where roots crawled like glass snakes traveled the fallers, discovering the nude sources of wombs. Medusas born from midnight breaks glared them to stone. Petrified waterfalls froze them, and white grass rose sheer from black halls. O oh, ebon and scape, intestine of basalt, down shagreen cliffs, Shinier than tinfoil perilous with smooth swerve, thy feet default. O oh, plunging gambler of the scantling sod, hear cavernous with guilt groan for your god. No birds but nocturnal salt tricklings from seas, no green but all the limelight glow to the limp flame. Hear the intense mole sings only, only the digging its song, its knell. Suddenly, all the continents slipped and fell. In terms of analysis, that was suddenly all the continents. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, talking about it, narrative, what, what exactly is going on in this poem? It sounds like something terrifying is happening. And I've read it a couple times, and each time I, I, I sort of discover something new. Like, at first it seems like this horrifying uh, thing happening to the world. But then I realized the world is very localized in this in this poem. Uh, in the first verse we see, suddenly all the continents slipped and fell, a Gulliver crash, the oceans and caves snapped shut with Tyrannosaurus jaws. The moon was not well, the sun through a scrim of foam peered like a child with open wonder at adults gone wild. Um, and you think, oh, well, this is a devastating event, uh, but it, it, the poem goes on to talk about cliffs and, uh, like, caverns and, uh, like, it talks about moles, like, in intense mole sings, only, only the digging its song its knell. And what I think is going on in this poem is it takes place um, on a cliffside, on a beachy kind of area. And part of the cliff falls and it creates um, various caverns, creates a little bit of destruction in this localized area. Um, but for, like, for the observer, it looks like a big event, but very controlled. Uh, 
Uh, and to the average person, they might not really know that it's happening if they're not at the beach. But if you were localized there, if you were one of the animals or if you were in the caverns, it might feel like the world is coming apart. It might feel like the the oceans are, are being destroyed. It might feel like the... Um, the continents are slipping and falling like something devastating has to happen from from your perspective so harold norse is using some interesting perspective in this poem to to talk of a story of what feels like cataclysm and an apocalypse for the for the people um experiencing uh the um the event and the the tone of the poem is worth talking about too it feels biblical it feels uh, sort of devastating and and um, you know world ending in, in a way. Uh, this is you see that in the second verse too. Like into the caves where roots crawled like glass snakes, traveled the followers, discovering the nude source of wombs. Medusas born from midnight breaks glared them to stone. Petrified waterfalls froze them and white grass sheer from black halls. So really just describing what's happening as this world is sort of crumbling. New things are, are happening. Uh, and you get like Medusa's born from midnight break. So using sort of Greek mythology, using sort of uh, this, this larger than life language to describe maybe something that's happening on a wonder, regular basis. And it feels very epic even if, again, like a lot of people might not notice that it's, that it's, that it's happening. Uh, and, and another thing about this poem that is worth noting is the uh, the structure, the the rhyme scheme that's used. Um, I, I believe it goes A, B, A, C, C uh, in each verse. There's four verses. And so you get fell, shut, well, which rhymes with well, child, and wild. Um, uh, but the rhymes that, the, that Harold Norse are using are, are very sort of off kilter. They sound alike in a in a couple of ways, but they they don't exactly like um, like fit each other because they might be multiple syllables uh, long. So the poem comes off as a bit um, uh, asymmetrical, I would say at times, um, especially because you're using a a b a c c. Like b doesn't have a rhyme anywhere, and I think it's meant uh, intentionally to try to throw you off to get you in the mindset of maybe your world is is crashing down. It's um, things are not going well here. Uh, so it, it like I, I, I say it's intentional, but it could also be unintentional. And this poem could just be, you know, have a few structural problems that prevent it from really flowing. But I do think it's intentional to get you in that sort of mindset there. Let me know in the, in the comments below if you agree or disagree or if you have your own thoughts on why the rhyme scheme is set that way. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Suddenly All the Continent. It's a pretty fun poem. Uh, if, if it's, uh, if it seems grand and, and epic and whatnot, let me know in the comments below if you understand why, or like, if you have a reason why maybe this, the, the, that Harold Norris sort of chose this tone for, for a poem that seems to be about nature. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty fun poem to read. I highly recommend that you read it. Let me know in the comments below. I'll put a link in the description as well so you can read it and um, offer your opinion. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that other people can find out about this poet or this poem if they don't already know. Uh, also, join the Discord if you want to have further conversations about uh, poetry, books, movies, TV, other forms of media as well. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and destructive travels. Farewell.